Oh, hey, gentle ladies and men. Uh, sorry for that gun. You've caught me at an interesting time. See, this is supposed to be my first review, but honestly, I'm a little anxious, which is why I've been stall. Which is why I've been stalling. I got hiccups from the stream. Uh, gotta get working on this fucking review. Would you shut? I've been watching far too much Linkara recently, and his experiences, combined with what I've seen of a whole bunch of other guys, uh, nostalgia critic, a phallus, a kadikaris. Yeah, please remember to stay beautiful. Talk about Pixel Empire, or I'll pop a cap in your fucking ass. Bye. Lead me to the understanding that most, if not all, internet critics are doing their jobs under the constant threat of death and destruction. Which is why I've decided to preempt such threats. Uh, the guy I obtained this off of mentioned eldritch spirits contained within. I think this is what he was referring to. But it is just a nerf gun. So, who the hell knows? Oh. Okay. Let's dig in, shall we? So, the review. You may have noticed the title, Thesis Statements, and you might be wondering what I mean. Uh, the review show market is competitive, so I decided to put a little spin on the formula. Instead of giving a review score to a game, I'll sum it up in a single sentence at the beginning of the video and restate it at the end for effect. Hence, thesis statement. Uh, honestly, I think it'd be better for views if people come in knowing full well what to expect, again taking from Linkara's school of reviewing. And besides, number scores are so passe, especially when people pretend 8.5 is a bad score. Today's long-awaited review is of Trackmania Turbo. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Classic. My introduction to the Trackmania franchise was Nations ESWC, standing for Electronic Sports World Cup. It was a free game, but I had a grand old time with it, editing my own tracks and racing around on them, even though the racing in Trackmania is less racing than it is time trials. My love was sparked, and it continued on with Trackmania United, which added a whole lot of new elements, including all the other environments for the games I hadn't even played, these being uh, uh, Trackmania Original and Trackmania Sunrise. Fast forward a few more years, and Trackmania 2 started coming out. I'm going to pretend it was my first episodic title, including three environments which were all released and sold separately under the title of Trackmania 2 all connected through this mania planet surface. And they were pretty glorious in their own right, boasting improved graphics over the previous titles and even more new environments, however much they looked like some of the old ones. Hey, wait a fucking minute here. All right, this pre-review section is getting a little long, but you must be wondering, why the shit am I telling you all this and what's today's thesis statement? Well, around 2011, right before uh, Trake Media 2 started coming out, Ubisoft ate Nadio, that being the company that was making the Trake Media games. And while Trake Media 2 came out relatively unscathed, uh, the franchise was about to get wrenched apart. So naturally, our thesis statement for today is don't give Ubisoft your favorite IP. Let's be real here. Trackmania Turbo has all the trappings of what should have been a good game. 
first and foremost, it's got a hell of an aesthetic. There's this arcade racing shtick that permeates everything in here. It's bright, it's colorful, it's fast, and it's loose. It's like an 80s dream palace. Daytona USA, anyone? I'm also impressed with how the handling of the cars has been improved since Trek Mania 2 with the exception of the new Lagoon environments car, but we'll get to that later. The handling feels much weightier than Trek Mania 2's cars, it feels a lot more controllable. Cane drifting is smoother, Valley's dirt tracks are easier to navigate, and I, I can actually power slide in this thing. But as strange as it sounds, I'm less infatuated with driving here as I am with the track editor's editions. As I said earlier, there's a new environment called Lagoon, evoking images of those mountains in the sea off China's coast, or that one James Bond movie. Along with that, there's far more blocks to play around with than there once were. Uh, new transitional pieces, scenery, these weird hillside things in the valley theme that I like a lot. It's gotten a fair bit deeper than it once was. But the track builder is also where some of the biggest problems are. Rampant Ubiconic bugs aside, like being unable to paint these big stadium pillars when I used to be able to, yeah, that's a new bug. There is no standard track building menu by default. Yeah, in this PC port of a console game from a primarily PC franchise, you get the console track building menu and it's horrifically unfriendly to the keyboard and mouse. Now let's be straight here. The console menu could have come up as a normal option along the regular track building menu, say if you started fiddling with your controller while you were building, and then it switched back if you moved your mouse a bit or clicked or something, allowing you to seamlessly transition on the fly. But what they've done instead of all that is give you the console menu by default and once you're in the track building screen, yeah, this isn't in the game settings, you have to mouse up to the top of the screen, click a button, then click to get the normal menu back. And this isn't something you can just do, oh no! You have to convert the track over for some reason when you use the normal menu, and you get this little pop-up box asking you if this is really what you want to do. Yes, of course I want to use the mouse and keyboard menu. This is what I've been doing ever since I started playing Track Mania. I have a controller here, but it's for driving, not track building. Hell, as a last kick in the ass of anyone who even liked the old track builder, you can't even name your tracks. They're given the secret agent man treatment. You know, secret agent man, secret agent man. We're taking away your name and we're giving you a number instead. You can't name your tracks. They're just given a random number because that's smart. Make it impossible to use any search function whatsoever. Make it impossible to distinguish one track from another aside from the thumbnail, which you can only take from track view. You can't actually use a pan camera like you used to be able to. Hey, boys. Yeah, I'm calling you boys. You know, boys rifle. Ain't that funny. What's your favorite track of mine? Oh, I know. I think I was partial to number eight. Who was that number 21? The one with the big set. Oh, that reminds me. You remember that problem I had with Lagoon's handling characteristics? Time to bring that issue to the front. See, normally when you're driving on pavements or the roller coaster track bits, the car handles extremely tightly and turns on a goddamn dime. It would be fine if it was consistent and all, but go. As soon as you go off-road, or even better, if you start driving on these wooden panel things, which I would like more, the car becomes about as unwieldy as Jim Sterling's big-ass dick sword. So I'm pretty sure he could handle it just fine. If the road is made of wood, then the tires must be made of socks. That shit gets slippery. Yeah, it's a PC port. Big surprise, coming from Ubisoft. Always handling control releases first, despite how consoles seem to be dying off, and it really does feel like a PC port. The button icons, the track building menu, hell, the menus in general. God damn, these folder preview pictures are so very unrepresentative of the blocks inside. Of course they had to screw the intuitiveness of the menus up too. Another thing missing is 
the satisfying, if shallow, customization from earlier games. Probably yet another piece of guff lost to consolization. There's no car paint or menu. Which would have been fine-ish, I guess, but then there are no modding options either for PC players. You used to be able to download entirely new car models, new environment skins. When we get in return, some moderately strict, Preset paint schemes and decals, which again would be alright, but to unlock a lot of them, you have to be insanely good at the game. Some even requiring every Trackmaster time in the game to be beaten, which are basically unlisted dev ghost times. All 200 of them! Fucking 200! Someone get Dragon Rider Khalil in on this. Also, side note, Dragon Rider, that sounds like a name he gave himself to look cool. Like... I, I've heard stories about the actual origin of that name, but it, it sounds so faked. And besides that, there are some minor issues, one of these being the Ubiconic smattering of bugs that will likely never get fixed, considering the last update the game got was back in November of 2016, and that was support for the ever-beloved privileged goggles. And it probably fucked up a lot more than it added. Then there's some optimization issues. I got some odd choppiness in the menus and in-game, and I have a GTX 1070, so there's really no excuse. And then, because it's a Ubisoft game, say it with me now, you play requirement. Liquid Filth, everyone's favorite third-party service that nobody asked for. Hell, at least Origin gives me free games every once in a blue moon, some of them not even that bad. You play? What does you play give me? Club actions that are basically rebranded achievements? So yeah, it's it's kind of an unfinished mess. As I was writing this script, I was fiddling about in game to check up on a few things. And guess what? The console track building menu is actually more well thought out in how the menus are navigated than the messy state they left the PC builder in. Unacceptable. So class, what did we learn today? Never give Ubisoft your favorite IP. I gotta keep you somewhere safe. I do not need you hovering above me at night and shooting me in the dick. Yeah, but I just assume... Fine, I can't argue. I'm, I'm arguing with a god! <laughs>